Today, we are going to look in on the Red Wigglers in the tower system. This is the tower system I have, which is the Worm Factory, but basically this procedure goes for any of the tower systems that you may find out there, whether they're square or round. First, we're going to take a look in on the top, which as you remember, we did the Apple experiment on, which was the frozen versus the not frozen. And if you've been here before, you also remember that I'm having a heck of a problem with plastic. And since I don't think I'm going to easily be able to pick all of this out and use the castings, I am going to do a water harvest on this layer. So of course I'm going to pick out the bulk of it if I can, but what I'm going to do for the primary part of it is I'm going to do a water harvest, which I will show you outside here in a little bit. But the first things first, we have to get the worms to get out of here. They had a little bit of worm chow the last time that we looked in, and so they are, they have finished up all of the regular people food in here, and they are now ready to get out of this area. I'm gonna pick out these peels or whatever they are too. We'll give them to the other layer when we feed it. So what I'm gonna do here is just fluff these up, give them an aggravation method, and then I'm just gonna sit it on top of Blue and any worms that are still hanging out in here are gonna crawl in and live with Blue. So while the harvest tray is removing its worms and going to live with Blue, now we're looking in on the tray that was last fed and we gave it uh, quite a bit of cucumber. Look at these beautiful castings. We are down to 79.7 .7 degrees Fahrenheit and 70% humidity, which is not very far down. But the heat is making for some very beautiful castings. Some other people had been asking questions below. I would put in a community post for people to ask questions about this. And several of the questions, I'm just going to go ahead and answer them. Although I did answer everybody separately, I'm going to answer them for everybody else right now. And one of them was, my castings appear brown and not black like their castings. Is it because of color grading or is it really a difference? It is a difference. My bedding is primarily cardboard bedding, which makes kind of this uh, chocolate, you know, like a chocolate bar color castings. If I was to use something like outdoor leaves and the such, then these castings would probably be near jet black. All right, so let's look in here and see if there's any food left. Seeing the skin of a cucumber. And let's see, are we seeing anything else? More skin of cucumber and seeds of cucumber. We are probably going to get some uh, sprouts at some point in this part. So this has all had one people food feeding and now it is going to be go into the pre-harvest mode, which means this will be the top tray today and it will get some worm chow. Let's look at the next layer down. This next layer down has never had any people scraps whatsoever, just cardboard. So this was started about three months ago and it does not have any people food, or at least it didn't and it is doing lovely. Look at all those castings in there. So this video is more about doing some troubleshooting with the different kinds of harvests that you can do with the bin, as well as looking at some of the food experiments. And then also today at the end, when I start my new tray, I'm actually gonna try a little bit of a bedding experiment in here. So looking in here, I do have worms in here a good amount. I see a little bit of springtails, but that's about all that we're seeing in this. And this is after about three months of living in the tower. So what I'm trying to do here is kind of, I'm relatively new to this tower sort of uh, system. And so what I'm trying to do is kind of gauge how long does it take to get from the bottom layer, just as regular dry cardboard, all the way up to the top. Now, I've been switching these almost every single month, but we're going to go into winter pretty soon. I know, don't hate me, but, you know, is there a difference when it comes to colder temperatures? 
I mean, it's, it's 80 degrees in the basement here. As time goes on, I'm gonna see, you know, in the summertime, I can swap out one of these every single month and get castings. Will I be able to do that in the winter? Put your comments below, what are your thoughts on that? Okay, let's get the next layer down. Okay, so this layer is two months old. It looks a little bit different and a little less processed than the one above, but yet it still has quite a bit of castings in here, which is interesting how the worms tend to travel up and down even though there's not any food down here other than the bedding. And another thing that somebody had asked is, what kind of beddings could they use? Should they use potting soil? And no, I would not recommend using potting soil in the event that you didn't have the ability to have cardboard, I would probably get organic manure, uh, composted cow manure. Usually sell that at any of the big box stores year round. And I would use that as bedding. And this also kind of ties into another question that somebody sent, which was how do I get my worms super fat? Now there are other channels that are professional worm sales channels and they generally will use manure as their base for the worms to live in instead of cardboard. I use this because my goal is to get rid of my garbage. If your goal is to get fat worms to go f uh, fishing with, then maybe swap this out for composted cow manure, a lot more nutrients in there for the worms. So they will basically be eating continuous all day long. Whereas with this, they're really not. My worms tend to stay pretty small because they get cardboard for bedding. Here is a red wiggler. Now, the biggest red wiggler I have seen is like the size of a pencil. This guy is a full-grown worm, and yet he's very tiny. And that's fine for me. But if it's not fine for you, I would definitely use a base of composted cow manure. And in addition to that, maybe don't feed them as much people scraps and then go with some kind of a worm chow. I do know there are various channels out there that sell their worm chow. You can buy commercial worm chow, or you can do like me and make it yourself, grinding up whatever dry goods you have that are close to expiring or are ex expiring, similar to wheat flour, oatmeal, rice, um, barley, any kind of grain like that, grind it up, mix it up. I put eggshell in mine just so I can remember to give them their grit because I'm dingy that way. But if you wanted the biggest worms possible, I would absolutely go that way. Uh, don't overfeed them with the worm chow though because it could heat the bin up and kill everybody. First things first, we've got our tray here that has been having the worms leave it. And I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of these castings and put them into a screen. Got a very fine mesh screen here and they are all gonna go in there so that when I rinse all these castings out, these stupid plastic shreds will stay on top and then all the goodness from the worm castings will go through with the water. All right, let's take it outside now. All right, here we are back outside and this is as simple as it is. It sometimes takes a couple of rinses to get this all out but you just basically keep rinsing and letting the water go through and anything that stays on top of the screen, you can either recompost or in my case, throw it in the garbage. And if you may notice, there are a few worms in here and they will become wild worms in the garden. I'll pick them out and toss those in my raised bed. I'll bring you back in a minute and show you how it's going. And you can see what I'm really doing is making worm tea. And as soon as I get this all filled up, I'm gonna give that to my pepper plants. It's really easy, and you could actually even do this if you weren't trying to get rid of uh, a contaminant or something. You can do this anyway, just to make worm tea. Another idea is if you want to have them sit in a bucket full of water and dissolve first, giving them probably an hour or two. Worms will be just fine underwater for a couple of hours, especially since it's going through a spray like this, there'll be enough oxygen for them in there. 
which is what I'm going to do secondarily because there's still a lot of solids in here that need to uh, reduce into a liquid. So I'm going to do both. I went through the screen, dumped what was left over into my peppers, and then I'm actually going to let the rest of this sit in a bucket for a couple of hours and screen it again before I uh, toss the other plastic out. All right, so here we are. We're going to start reassembling all of the, the tower layers. And this time what I'm going to do is I am going to put non-shredded cardboard in here. It's just going to be hand-torn and I did dip it in some water. Okay, so here we go. Just kind of to prove the fact that you really don't need a shredder or anything like that. You can just tear things up yourself with your hands. It goes a lot easier when it's wet like this. But I'm going to just put that in there and get them their risers. Okay, here we go. Since they're going to be the very bottom, I'm putting these risers in there to kind of um, hold the plastic up so that it doesn't bow, so that it will last longer. All right, the next layer up. Okay, the next layer up is the one with the avocados. This one just has regular bedding in it. This tray is what we are going to feed today. This is the feeding tray and we are going to give them some big, huge cucumber pieces. Good thing I'm about tired of cucumbers because I think leaving that one on the vine definitely probably killed it off. Okay, then we're going to add the next layer up, which is going to be the chow layer. Now this is just going to get chow, no people food at all. Okay, and in my case, this time it is just alfalfa because I have yet to get a new grinder to grind up all of my household uh, grains and such. But that will definitely be enough to keep them for the next three or four weeks. As many of you know, I have a new puppy and I am going to send out for a DNA test, which I will hopefully have the results for in another couple of weeks. And if you will put in the comments below, what four breeds do you think make up Shadow? The top three people will get a t-shirt that says, feed a worm, not a landfill. Alternately, you could get a plant obsessed t-shirt, but if you already have one of those, you can get the feed a worm, not a landfill t-shirt. So make sure you put your size of your t-shirt in the comment below with your ideas of what breeds he is. All right, guys. Well, if you like this content, I have a playlist right over here that is all of the worm tower. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're going to like that. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.